welcome to another jewelry making video brought to you by KeepsakeCrafts.net. Today we're going to be making a necklace using jasper stones and swags of crystals. It's a design with lots of potential combinations. So for today's necklace I am using these 15 by 20 millimeter jasper oval gemstones. I believe these are picture jasper. Picture jasper is defined as the stones actually look like landscapes. They've got all these striations. Uh, if I'm wrong, correct me. But they're quite beautiful. And I thought I would combine them with something you might not have expected. And that's these Swarovski crystals. And I have them in a color combination called Mojave. So the first thing you'll want to do when planning a design like this is just do a couple quick sketches. Decide how many beads you're going to use in your main necklace how many swags you're going to use, and how many beads each swag is going to cross. So I've settled on this where I'll have eight beads on my main necklace and then three swags crossing over two beads each. And But you can, you can do it however light you like. You can have really long ones, you can have many short ones, you could use any beads you want. It's really entirely up to you. So I've laid out my eight jasper beads here and I've put two spacers. These are five millimeter antique gold plated corrugated spacers. And I've put two in between them because my swags will be hanging in these spaces. So I thought it would look better to have them in between spacers. I also have 64 millimeter Swarovski crystal bicones and I've separated them into piles of 20 each. 20 for each of my swags. For finishing you'll need eight of these wire protectors. You'll also need some crimps, a clasp, a little bit of chain for finishing your end to make it adjustable, and some bead stringing wire. I also have just some three millimeter brass beads that I'm going to use to finish the end after my jasper beads. And then for tools, you'll need wire cutters, chain nose pliers, and a tool for doing your favorite crimping technique. I'm going to use the one-step crimpers. When you're laying out your design, it's helpful to use just a flexible tape measure to kind of measure the space in between each of your sections so that you have an idea of how long each of your swags needs to be. So to get started, we're going to cut a piece of bead stringing wire a little bit longer than one of your swags. So mine's going to be around three or four inches, so I'll cut this about five inches long. And then to finish one end, I'm just going to slide on a crimp and a wire protector in one end. out the other, and then that wire end goes back through that crimp, and you can finish your crimp however you like. You can use crimping pliers, you can just flatten it with a pair of chain nose pliers. I have this tool, which I have reviewed before on this channel, called the One Step Crimper, and I've been quite pleased with the results, so I'm going to use it. Whatever crimping method you use, always make sure that your wires are lying parallel inside and always check your connection to make sure it's strong. And if you like you can use crimp covers. The one step crimper does such a nice job that I don't feel like I need to. So I'm just going to cut off the excess and then string on 20 of my crystal beads. Now once you've strung one of your short strands of beads before you finish the end, it's not a bad idea to just go ahead and hold it up to the space that you want it to fill and see if it's long enough, if it needs to be longer, if it needs to be shorter, if you like the drape. And then once you have that done, go ahead and finish them all. So you're going to finish all of your little scallop strands just like this with a wire protector on each end. And after that, it's a good idea to do an actual test of the scallops on and the spacers on the, on the wire with the beads, just to be sure that you like it, because it's a lot easier to fix any issues now 
than it will be to fix them later. So I decided after looking at this setup that I thought my scallop was a little too shallow and what I'm going to do to solve that problem is just only have one spacer in between each of my jasper beads and that will take up enough room that I'll have a bit deeper of a scallop. So I'm going to get my necklace laid out, ready to string, and then I'll be back. So here I have my jasper beads and the spacers and my little scallop strands ready to be strung. I have them all laid out and what I did was used my sketch. So I have my eight jasper beads with a spacer in between each one and then you can see this first scallop strand starts after the second jasper bead and then there's one after that and one after that so that's where I have these laid out and then I'll just keep following my chart to finish the stringing and notice I'm not finishing any ends I just have a, a bead clamp on one end of my string and I'm just going to string the center section of my necklace until I know I have it right and then we'll add the beads for the sides so these first two are easy. A spacer, a jasper bead, a spacer, a jasper bead, and a spacer. And now the first loop of one of my crystal strands. And then a jasper bead, a spacer. And the next crystal strand and then a jasper bead in the end of this crystal strand and a spacer and the beginning of this one this is why I don't know about you I don't think I could do it without the sketch I'm sure I'd mess something up I may yet and then the other end of this crystal strand and then a bead and then the final crystal strand and then finish up with my last spacers and my last two jasper beads and throw another clamp on this end these are called bead bugs or bead stoppers they're great it's just a little spring with handles keeps you from dropping all the beads off your strand Ah, there we go. And that looks just about right. So now all I'm going to do is fill up the remaining ends of this necklace with my brass beads and then finish those ends with wire protectors and crimps. So here you can see I've added about four inches of these three millimeter brass beads after my jasper beads. And I've also added a crimp and a wire protector and before I slide the end of my wire back through the crimp to finish I'm just going to put it through about a four inch length of chain. This saves me from having to use so many of my brass beads and it's also often more comfortable just around the back of the neck. So that should just pop onto the wire protector. And then you can put the wire back through your crimp and finish it with your preferred crimping method. As I always say, make sure to test your connection before you trim your wire. And then repeat to add a crimp and a piece of chain to the other side. Just make sure that when you pull up your beads snug that you don't pull them that so tight that your necklace is stiff. You want a little bit of slack in there so that it drapes nicely. The final step is to add your clasp with a jump ring to one of the end links of your chain and you're done. So here's another look at the necklace we made today. Consider all the different possibilities. You could make a very short choker style necklace and have lots of long scallops dangling down. You could have multiple scallops in different lengths. You could have a long necklace with just a few short ones. You could make your scallops out of anything, different colors, different beads. There are so many possibilities. I hope you'll have fun with this project. 
and make yourself something you'll enjoy. Thanks so much for watching Keepsake Crafts videos. Up on the screen are two more necklace videos you might like to try making. Please be sure to check out my blog, keepsakecrafts.net, and if you like this video, please be sure to click like and make sure you have subscribed to my channel so you'll see more like it. Happy creating. Bye-bye.